So welcome back everybody. <clears throat> we are going to Bezos Shem today conclude chapter 34. And Bezos Shem tried to even begin and learn a, a part of chapter 35. <clears throat> because we're holding pretty much the end, towards the end of 34. So Dr. Rebbe is touching upon over here <clears throat> that uh, as we've seen we learned it rather in the previous in the previous chapters that uh, that a crucial component in our Avedis Hashem is the notion of simcha, joy, elation, gladness of heart, and so on and so forth. So the Rebbe elaborated. It's not just a simcha. It's go go for a tensel for a little dance and be happy, be merry. But again, the the um, in detail how the Rebbe explains and ra and ration and in a, a very um, very in a very much of an explanatory manner the importance how important it is and how um, part and parcel uh, the notion of simcha is in our Avedis Hashem <clears throat> so again if you can see it in the previous chapters um, and and um, again I welcome everybody to you can see it again even on, uh, you know this very website just on uh, the link box, uh, Tanya, but Tanya, or as you mentioned many times, the TanyaOnline.com website, which is again same hosted by the same kosher tube, but but uh, uh, for the newcomers over here, those um, you could uh, find it. I mention it always, time and again, as there's always those who are newly uh, attending the class and um, I always suggest you can go to tanyaonline.com which is again it's very much more it's very organized and, it, and it's a uh, class namely for this uh, for this um, the whole website rather it's about this class solely this class the Tanya class but namely you can easily follow the text there as well uh, additionally the easy access easier access to the previous classes um, so the Al Rebbe points out in the end of the 34th chapter that how do you, you know, one hand Al Rebbe in the previous chapters spoke about the importance of Simcha and Abedus Hashem, joy, and the uplifted beat and uplifted spirit. On the other hand, the Al Rebbe spoke about the Lev Nish Bavinitka and these very chapters, the broken heart, the uh, this broken spirit and so on, which is also a crucial component. Famous Vart said from one of the great tzaddikim, "There's no, uh, there's no, uh, um, uh, the, uh, there's no leif uh, shalim. There's no whole heart. The, mo the whole heart is the broken heart. Mm, there's no greater or there's no more of a, a, a whole heart than a broken heart." Now, today again, this is a Vart which very much is aligned with this, which David uh, Melech said in the famous uh, chapter Nun Aleph in Tehillim, <clears throat> but and al Tareb explains this in, 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 in these very chapters, the, the how crucial it is, how important it is to have that Leib Nishbar, that's Brachin Ahad, the broken heart, <clears throat> and uh, broken spirit, and how that brings down the Sitra Achra on high, that diffuses the energy of the uh, evil spirit, or the impure spirit on high even, um, Etc. Again, as you can see in these uh, previous chapters. So how do you go? How does it go together? You know, you can't. Apparently, one a person is a person, and it's not like a computer. You can just immediately switch and change programs. So how does it go together, or can you? Can it go together? In one hand, be besamech, and one hand, a broken heart. So here, the Alter touches upon this, and he brings from the Zayar a very interesting um, expression in the Zayar, which is pchiet kia beliboy misitre dov. As we will see, this is again the conclusion of the chapter. We'll get to it shortly. That the, the, that in 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 it, a cry is anchored in my heart on one side, and a joy is anchored in my heart in the other side. In other words, they can uh, express themselves in the same heart in the same person, because in the end of the day, they're both crucial. In our Avedis Hashem, but let's see it inside over here. So we're holding page 86, pretty much towards the end end of the chapter, about 10 lines before, or eight, nine lines before the end of the chapter. In the original text, you can see it on the corresponding English text as well, from the word Vihine. So Vihine b'chol prati minisim chasam nefesh. All the different types of 
joy and uh, of the soul, Hanis Karim La'el, which we explain and we mention before, again in these previous chapters, It is not that we're overriding the notion of one being shamed in his heart, eyes, um, disgusted in his eyes, um, and a broken heart, now, and, and a broken spirit. This is again, a, a, this is the Lushan. I'll tell you a quote over here from the famous capital, uh, famous chapter, chapter 51 in, in Tehillim, Neims um, Miris Yisrael, this Lev Nivzebein of Nimoz, Lev Nishbar, and there he says Ruach Nemucha, and so on. <clears throat> Uh, the Lushan, the, the idea of the Ruach, a broken spirit. So it, it's not that we're overriding this whole, the importance, the essentiality in our Avedis Hashem to have this Tzubarach Nahar, this broken heart. Which again, Notre Dame explains over here in these very chapters the importance of what is Dover Melech, why did Dover Melech make an emphasis, and why is it so Why is it so important, why is it so crucial, this Lev Nish So the, the, um, the, the, uh, the Notre Dame says that it's not a Meminia, which means you don't, it, there's no you don't. It, it, there's no it, no prevention. Meaning to say that it can it can't go together. Why can it go together? Because you can you can you have to. We understand that I mean, it can't go together with the notion of joy, which uh, on the surface you you know you again like you said if man is <clears throat> the human being can apparently again it's not just a, a robotic or a a, a, a a doesn't work robotically or like a computer you just flip pr programs one. One program and then another program, and there's no effect. A person, when, especially when you're dealing with emotion, emotion and express themselves and have after effects and so on. And so when you're dealing with simcha as one expression, it's a broken heart, it's a broken heart, and the sadness, or namely bitterness. Mirirus, remember the Altareb in the chapter Lamed Aleph, the French, it's not atzvus, it's not about atzvus, um, one being melancholy and so on, but it's it's miridus, it's a very different type of expression, but a koponim it is about bitterness, uh, which also has its express fully, it comes, it's a full expression, and you can just, can just shut it off momentarily, and on the moment, and it has its after effects, so how do they work together? So the Altenev says they can't work together, why? Because the bitterness is for one reason and the joy is focusing in another dimension and therefore they could be simultaneous simultaneously expressed or expressed in a way that they don't contradict and perhaps as to say better they don't contradict each other why or they could work hand in hand why because the kiyese um says yeah simultaneous you know it does say simultaneous says in the same time you're expressing your joy in Arveda Hashem, in the same time your heart could demonstrate this miridus, this bitterness, this no, the, the heart could express it's being a tzubrachna heart, it's a broken heart, a broken heart and broken spirits. Bishas, in the same time when you're expressing your joy in your relation to Arveda Hashem. Why so? And the answer is, Miyachar ki ayyesi nivze be'enov hu mitzadagufu enov shabahamis. This being shamed in his eyes, that's from the perspective of his body and his animal soul. And his joy is, is because of his godly soul. And the godly spark which is invested in his godly soul. To vitalize his godly soul. Like we learned before in Pedic Lamedal in the 33rd, in 33rd chapter, 31st chapter. Which means it's not for the same reason you're bitter is the same reason you rejoice. Then it would obviously be a contradiction. You can say, and from the very experience, I'm joyful, and the ve that very experience or that very reason what brings me joy and uh, brings me uh, it, it elevates and uplifts my spirit. That very reason <clears throat> is it brings me in bitterness and a ruach nemucha, a broken spirit, and so on, a broken heart, a broken spirit. That would not work, again, namely because of, because we, especially when you're dealing with sentiments and emotions and so on. But in the the Odal Tareb is pointing out is they're, they're for two separate reasons. They're for very two separate reasons. For example, I mean, eats and drinks, it, and you can do it for, to, together because they both have their function. This comes, the per eating comes, the person and drinking has its own effect. It it quenches the person's thirst or or. or or um, 
or um, or it takes the, the, the solid food and is able to digest it easier when a person drinks as it's known. Each one has their function and therefore they could be done simultaneously even though they both have their own objective and they both express themselves in the person's body in a very different way. And the same thing or similarly Dr. Rebbe says over here, the reason why the person has this levinish by the broken heart and the broken spirit is because he has to deal with his baggage, he has to deal with his reality of his body with his, and his animal soul which has bodily temptations and bodily inclinations and animal soul has animalistic temptations animalistic inclinations which <clears throat> which naturally do not not only don't, don't lie they disturb the person and as a Hashem he wants to go ahead and learn Tate and the Nefesh Bahamas said but he said no sit relax and so on and so forth and he looks back and he said I should have learned Tate that hour what interfere and interference is always that the the body the body and the animal soul which <clears throat> has their own set of needs and own set of wants and it constantly interferes and it's not only something looking in hindsight, but on a constant basis, we know this is what interferes in our Beit Hashem, and we have to deal with it. And we've dealt with it for a long time, Marichas Yamim Mishonim Tevis. For a long, long afaket, we ask Hashem that we should live long, but living long in this very physical world goes ahead, it goes together with being in a physical body, in a physical, and in Efshah Bahamas, in an animal soul. It's a horror, but Al Tarebis again so brilliantly points out, depicts the Nefshah Bahamas, the animal which exists within us. The animal soul exists within us, and again, it's not about irat, it's not about evil, it's just about whatever. Ultimately, the animal is also not evil. It's just whatever contributes to its comfort, that's what it does, and we have that within ourselves. Sit back, lay, be laid back. Or in laces, Hashem says, do not do that. And the animals within us says, you know, that, that, that would bring you pleasure, God forbid. So we have to deal with that. And you're dealing with an Eved Hashem with nose and is focused on his mandate why he came down to this world to execute the messages of the Nefshali Kis, of Teda, of Mitzvahs, of God, and so on. And he and he he understands and he appreciates this and this 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 mandate that he w was given to him, and he's uh, on that. Conveyor belt, meaning to say, he's moving along with 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 with, with um, passion and understanding, appreciation on that derech of Avedis Hashem, and then he, on a constant basis he has to deal with this which interferes, which again is kufus nefesh b'ham, his body is an animal soul, or is it So the 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 sadness, the bitterness, the broken heart, and the broken spirit is about something totally different. Hence, it could be expressed simultaneous. Because the simcha, the joy, comes because I have a godly soul and I have a godly spark which is vitalizing the godly, the godly soul. Meaning to say that I have within myself a chelik, a kami mal mamosh, a part of God mamosh. And could a person be ever more rejoiced, joy, 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 joyful, <clears throat> and more than rejoice? Uh, uh, and and stand in a tenua of of isreimim musa nefesh elation and 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 the soul in a state of exult um, more than the fact that just the knowledge that he has within himself a part of God mamish achil to the kami mal mamosh could you think of anything else more joyful than that obviously not. And therefore, a person is demanded, or it comes so uh, so natural that he's able to express a con and a simcha, a joy, and an elation of heart on a constant basis, because he has a nefesh of he has a godly soul, which is being vitalized every moment from the godly spark, and ultimately, the godly energy is vitalizing his nefesh of and the nefesh itself <clears throat> is God in full sense of manifestation, because again, it's not obscured by anything else or it shouldn't be, it has the ability not to be, so it's a nefesh of he has a godly soul, which is a chelik for the kami mal, so he has to be constantly sameach, and he has the ability, because of his nefesh of to implement uh, his mandate for which he was created for. Lassus le yizboruch dira v'tachteinu, to make a Kodesh Baruch this world, for a Kodesh Baruch a dwelling place, via his learning tain and his doing mitzvahs. And by extension, kol masech al shem shemayim mechol derechecha do'eyu, as we explained again the other day, but together with that, he has to be again. He has to have this broken heart and broken spirit, just because of again, because this is the this this the, this which goes along the, the way that the Prakadish Baruch Hu established the the Aveda or the the the, the yid which would 
act would bring about, would implement Hakadosh Baruch Hu's objective and goal for creation, which is establishing Hakadosh Baruch Hu a dwelling place in this physical world. It came through the Nisham investing in a body, and a body has an again goes with, together with the Nefesh Bahamis, which are constantly interf in, interfere. The objective is to transform the Nefesh Bahamis to transform the animal soul, like it says in the Mishnah of Hashem that even the Yitzhah Hara should love HaKadosh Baruch but that take, and in other words, to explain to, uh, to the, the person himself, even the Nefesh Baham, even from the bodily perspective, the animalistic perspective, should also appreciate, like you could domesticate an animal. In other words, it, it becomes, it, it becomes a fi refined, more refined animal once it's, it, it, once it's domesticated, Similarly, we could, we have to bring about the Avas Hashem, also the Yitzhar Hara, that we should understand that there's nothing really worth to invest in, not from the perspective of Nefshel Kis. Nefshel Kis doesn't need this information, that there's nothing worth more to invest in other than God and godliness and so on. But the, the objective, what the mission is telling us, that the Yitzhar Hara should appreciate that. So slowly but surely, we have the ability to transform, and we have to, we, we, this is part of our mandate, to transform our body and our animal soul, to make it more refined and so on and so forth. But until we get there, and even when we do, and even when we're working on it, it and the overall it stands as an obstacle. And if it stands as, an, as we all know it, you know, not to explain or elaborate on this, it stands as an obstacle. And therefore, this is where the Dover Melech said, "Leiv nish bevenit kechavatz brach nahar." It's because of the body and the animal soul, which is constantly telling me to <clears throat> give me a whole set new a set of rules, which. Are, are, are antithetical to the rules or to the information or the passion of the Nefesh Elikis of the Godly Soul. That's why I'm Tzabrach. <laughs> we say rules meaning say the animalistic or bodily animalistic we mentioned before, the bodily animalist, animalistic inclinations which are inclined to things which are bodily and animalistic. Things again ultimately would contribute to its own comfort which contradict the persons moving along in his in his in his Abedus Hashem in his service to God for which he was created for and that's why the person is 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 subrach and he's he's broken so what Dr. Rebbe is tell, telling us over here is that it could, could be simultaneously because for the reason why you're happy is not the reason why you're sad or you're bitter and the reason why you're bitter is not the reason why you're why you're happy why you're joyous and he brings over here Kahai Gavna he said, Zayar, and here, and similarly, it's brought in Zayar. Again, this is what we mentioned at the beginning of this class. This Zayar, that Pchiyat, this al includes the Pedic, the Lamedale, the 44th chapter. Pchiyat ki veli boi misitru do. Atzubroch in the hearts. A cry is anchored, rather, a cry is anchored, to be literally translated, a cry is anchored in my heart from this side of my heart. And joy is anchored in, in my heart on this side, which means that it, they could express themselves simultaneous, because they're two sides of the heart. And namely, what the Zayir is basically saying is for two reasons. What I'm joy, again, what I stand with Simcha, Bechedva, is for one reason, why I stand with Pchia, with a cry, is for another reason. So maybe they could, be, they, they could express themselves simultaneous. And that's the end of chapter. 20, uh, 30, 34. And with this, we will begin, and with uh, at this point, we'll begin Pedic Lamed Hay, the 40, 35th chapter. Now, I want to say that the 30, even though every single Pedic in Tanya is so precious and is a gem and a jewel on its own, which leads a yid in, every, in any given time, with any given a challenge, an obstacle to remain focused, and again, in a very unique way, in the most ununique, in the most unique way, but Dr. Rebbe, <coughs> so brilliantly, uh, brilliantly, obviously, with the Kirch of Kedusha, which he had, which Kedusha penetrates all the way to the nitty-gritty of reality. It's not just to be a Kaddish and just throw messages. You have to be holy, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and so on, <coughs> which we find in many other Svarim, which these people were holy, <clears throat> all the Bali Musa were very holy and they and their um, their messages were certainly divine and uh, we should we should learn these Svarim because they, nonetheless they do make in the end of the day they make an impact <clears throat> every Sefer Musa makes another impact in our Avedis Hashem 
allowing us to stay focused for what the new what we came down to this world with um, uh, the Al Tereb is Kuti Amorim, the Al Tereb is Tanya, his 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 approach to our Aved Hashem or dealing with our Aved Hashem, our challenges and obstacles and dealing with them and explaining us the Derech HaEle Beis Kale, the work for the perfect way how to ascend onto the Derech uh, HaMelech on the way of Melech Malcham Lech Malchus Baruch is undoubtedly very unique meaning to say the Kedusha comes down to the nitty gritty we mentioned before meaning to say the Al-Tarebu comes down to the very very challenges and 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 the, to the very nuances of our challenging life as a Yid <clears throat> and deals with it and, and, and helps us to go ahead with joy again and focus on this Derech HaMelech, on this way of uh, or this uh, to fulfill our mandate in our Vedas Hashem and again in a very very unique style which um, the more we learn Tanya we realize the incredible Kayach and the incredible personality or the incredible uh, Tzitkus of the Alter Rebbe it wasn't just throwing messages on high you know, Kedoshim Tiyu and so on, he dealt especially with his unique, so unique uh, approaches that the mandate of the Yid is not to be a Tzaddik, the mandate of Yid to, to be a Benini and explain what the Benini is. And again, this is just by far the the, uh, the most uh, accepted by so many, by so many. It's not uh, over here mentioning it over here, this is expect, accepted so many in the last 300 years. <clears throat> and encourage everybody to learn Tanya, you would see it literally metamorphoses changes our whole approach to our Avedis Hashem and despite we live in a world you know, we live in a world which is a provocative world we could even say that be bold and, and, and candid that it is something which is a, a world with so many challenges and we can get lost easily get lost and many times precisely when we learn these Sifri Musa we can sometimes get even more lost because in a way it, they, we find contradictions and from one from one area of our life to the other and and, and uh, the fact that we live in this world, we're not living in a mountaintop, not always we could understand or appreciate or internalize these important messages, which each one is mess is important. Al Tarebbe took a very different approach and and explained us what our mandate is and what the Bainani is and on the contrary we ought to be a Bainani. Together with that, the definition of a Bainani is someone never sinned. Never sins and never sinned, but very far from it. Sadik again, how does that work? We learned. <clears throat> go ahead. We, the, this is this is the this is what we learned up till now, or namely in the original chapters, up till Yud Beis, <clears throat> Yud Beis, Yud Gimel, Yud Dalid, which deals with the Benini, which you can look up in that on the very website. But as, why am I saying this? Because every Pedic over here is unique. Every Pedic unique. It's a in a, in a, in a very secret, perfect sequence, um, chapter after chapter, etc. Yet. I may the Pitik Lamed Hay has something very, very, you know, has something very fundamental. Like I say, each one from a different perspective is fundamental, but the Pitik Lamed Hay, from its own perspective, is extremely fundamental. Which the Al-Tarebbe ultimately tells us, because we're the Bainani, and because the mandate is the Bainani, in other words, you never get rid of the, your Tzahor and of Shabbat is always fully intact, and you never get rid of it, so what's the point? In other words, never get rid of the challenges, especially when it comes to thought to the more sensitive challenge, which is namely our most important challenge to keep and keep a pure, a pure thought and a pure mind and so on, which as we know it, this is the most the greatest challenge of Frumi it has. <clears throat> um, so what was the point? What was the purpose of Kodesh Baruch sent this Neshama that we would never be able to overcome, become that Tzadik again, that Tzadik is a Matana, Kodesh Baruch can give it as a present to a Yid to elevate him from the state of a Benini to the state of a Tzadik, but on his own it's the, the mandate of a Yid is to be a Benini, al Tihidosho. Again, I'm just throwing some tidbits of what Dr. Rebbe elaborated and encourage everybody who didn't get to who are new, newcomers to, to look into those chapters again from the beginning culminating in Yud Beis Yud Gimel Yud Dalet, which the Yud Beis begins the Benini. <clears throat> so Dr. Rebbe is telling, telling us that, that, that the Nefesh HaBahamis is fully intact. And that's the Benini, and that's what we ought to strive to. And again, Benini is someone who never sins and never sinned, but yet his Nefshah Bahamis, his challenges are always there. So what was the point that Kodesh Baruch sent out the into this world? Had our mandate to be, been, to be a tzaddik, to be, have the ability to completely transform the Nefshah Bahamis. Meaning to say that like, the tzaddik doesn't aim the he has no Yitzhara at all, that would be, that would make sense. You come down with the Yitzhahara, but your mandate is to be the Tzaddik and to completely uh, get rid, get rid of the Yitzhahara. 
Again, whatever that means, we don't, we, we can't, no one could really, it's, it's very, it's very few tzaddikim, you know, someone who's badged and has laid this guy's big tzaddik, is not necessarily a tzaddik, very far from a tzaddik, a tzaddik has no yitzhahara, but you think about this person who you just define as a tzaddik, and that he has no yitzhahara, he has no yitzhahara, be realistic, not everybody who's named tzaddik, is, I mean, we're talking about a tzaddik, a tzaddik is somebody who has no yitzhahara, but if, theoretically, if that would be if that would be the mandate of the yid to hit tzaddik, and that would be part of the program, that would make sense, <laughs> because that you're, you, there, there is accomplishment that you were born with the yitzhahara and you have the ability to get rid of the yitzhahara. And again, think about it, whatever the means. It's hard to us to appreciate someone without yitzhahara means to say he's not challenged. He walks out in the street, he's not challenged by anything that he has to keep his eyes, his mind away, his, and, and, and from this, that, and the other, because he doesn't have yitzhahara. Like other mission before the Chet. You see, weren't even, the, the Gemara says, the Tater says rather, that they weren't even wearing clothes. The Leis Bishashu. The Elam, there wasn't a challenge because everything was, it went in a different, everything was a different level before the Chet. You know, other mission's conscious mind, we didn't have a Yitzhah Or rather, the other mission before the Chet was in a state where there wasn't, it wasn't challenged by anything. So that's similar to the life of the tzaddik. So that we would that would be part of the program, or that would be the program. That would make sense. And Shama comes down into this world and is able to transform his yitzhahara completely and to rid of anything which is associated with ra and everything like is a bechal That even tzaddik is completely in love with the kodesh baruch and completely. That's the main mandate, or that would be the 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 the, 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 the program or the objective of the program. That would make sense. Why the neshama would come down. But ultimately, you're saying that the Aveda, the main mandate of the Yid, is that to be a Bainani means to say, despite your Zahari isn't fully intact and challenging you on a constant basis, <clears throat> and you'll never be, never, never, could be you'll build a whole life, decade after decade, never ridding the Nefshah Bahamas, Nefshah Zahari, would always be challenging for you now. In the same token, again, we say challenging, meaning it's not Chas Hashem of the person who sins. The moment the person sins, even Machshavte, something accepts Machshavah willingly, knowing that it's inappropriate, a thought, knowing it's inappropriate and accepts it, he becomes a rush on that moment. You now, the Bia Bainani is not an easy, it's not an easy, but the only thing it's doable, it's attainable, as Dr. Rebbe elaborates. The moment, for example, when it comes to a thought that you know it's inappropriate, you throw it away, because if you formally, if you accept it, <clears throat> if you deliberately accept it, you're called a Russia, you're called a Russia, you're not a Benini anymore. But yet, in the same token, so the Benini is layover or it doesn't do any of it, it's not in mice, not in action, not in speech, not even in thought, which is obviously very special, but we can appreciate that this is attainable. It's a milchama, it's a war, it's a, a battle, but if we stay focused, then we know it's attainable. <clears throat> Even when it comes to thought, because a person is meich shal we have the, 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 the full ability to control even our thoughts, our eyes, our ears, and so on. Complete. We're God, we have the ability, that we, that's the way we have created every human being, not only the yid. He has the ability to govern over his heart. It means, say, the heart is sending a signal, the will not accept it, the eyes will not accept it. So, so, but, but yet in the same token, it's a constant battle, it's a constant challenge. I never transformed my, my animal soul, never transformed, never got rid of the Yetzir Hara. So what's the point? Why did David should again? So if, if the program is to be a tzaddik, it makes sense. But if it's if it's mainly to be a benin, again, the whole tzaddik is a bonus. It's similar to the notion of a kain. That if a kodesh makes you a kain, you're a kain. If not, if you're born to a kain, to, to, to a father a kain, you're a kain. If not, then you're not a kain. And the same thing, the notion of a tzaddik, it says it's similar to Matana Kodesh Baruch who decides to infuse within you the Nefesham of a tzaddik. And so on, like again, we explain in the, in the, towards the end of ch chapter 14, and that's a possibility. Or, 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 or in other areas, it's a Kodesh Baruch who decides you to be a tzaddik. If he doesn't, be, if, if he doesn't decide you, you to be a tzaddik, you could be a benini kol yom. Meaning being a benini means every day in your entire life, it'll be another struggle. And if it's a, so if it's a struggle, we never ultimately rid the Yitzhahara, we never get rid of the, the uh, these temptations, or at least these signals, let's call it, which is coming from the Lev, coming from the Yitzhahara, so what's the point? Why did they wish to send out the Neshama just to Zuchem The Neshama should just be bothered and, 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 um, and be, can I say, nagged by the Yitzhahara in the entire life. So what was the point? What's the purpose? I can't do the job anyway, so what did I come down to this world for? So in this very chapter, the Alter Rebbe is going to point out, and he says, in the end of the day, you're a Yid which was fulfilling Tehra Mitzvahs. You didn't read the Yitzhah Hora. 
but nonetheless, you made sure the Yitzhah never uh, persuade you, not ultimately, to chas v'shal violate HaKadosh Baruch Hu's in command, not in action, not in speech, not even thought. And again, we meet to say, you've done everything that Kodesh Baruch Hu tells you to do. You constantly do everything that Kodesh Baruch Hu asks you to do in your action, in your speech, and in your thought. <clears throat> so even though in the in a core level, in other words, the Yitzhahot is still fully intact, but you're ultimately doing what Kodesh Baruch Hu wants you to do. And staying away from what Kodesh Baruch Hu doesn't want you to do. And that's very, very precious and very special. And that's why the Pasik says, La say say. In the end of the day, we are implementing uh, what Kodesh Baruch Hu's mandate. And for this, it's worth for the neshama to come down. And again, the Altarev is going to demonstrate in this very chapter the v- important virtue <clears throat> over a, a neshama doing Tere Mitzvah as opposed to a neshama prior to coming down into this world. <clears throat> Despite it's a neshama, and again it remains, or it is, a neshama, which is a part of a Kodesh Baruch Chelek Al Kamimal, which is essentially a part of a Kodesh Baruch, which is apparently, what could you think about something, something greater than that? It's totally godly. So what does it need to adapt the godliness which exists in Teda and the godliness which exists in Mitzvah? Isn't it godly probably prior to its coming down to this world? So the Rebbe comes to explain this in Pedic Lamentei. No, there's something very special when the Shem invests in a body, <clears throat> into a body, <clears throat> and is able via the body to learn Teda and do HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Mitzvah. Namely, when it comes to Mitzvah, we know we can only perform Mitzvah when the Nisham is invested in a body because if it's divested from body, we cannot perform Mitzvah. We cannot put on Tefillin if the person doesn't have a hand. The Nisham and cannot put on Tefillin. And for this, it's all worth it for the neshama to come down to perform, to perform Tatum, to learn Tatum, to do Hashem's mitzvahs, and that carries a greater virtue than the neshama prior to coming down to this world, the way the neshama is on high, and therefore it's all worth it, despite we never have the ability, we don't have, again, as a Bainian, we don't have the ability to completely transform our Yitzhahara, our Nefshah Bahamis, <clears throat> into Kedusha, because then again, it's Kol Yekilat, Rebbe writes, Ule Kol Yekol Yavim all his life, he'll be in this very in, in war, in this very battle, because it's a hard, it's fully intact, yet it's still worth it, because in this world he could fulfill a Kodesh Baruch Hu's title. And he could do a Kodesh Baruch Hu's mitzvah, where the neshama divested from body cannot do, and for this it's all worth it. And in this, in this to come down to this goof and goof, and the Atreb is going to explain in this chapter what is ultimately the virtue of learning Tayyip and doing mitzvahs over the neshama prior to its coming down into this world, um, uh, prior, uh, it, despite it maintains the greatest levels of holiness, as it's again nefesh the kis, it's a godly soul, which is a chelik l'kami mal mamash. And what could be a greater virtue than that? And what is again the specialty of doing a mitzvah over the neshama on its own? So, um, you know, maybe the the uh, we have a pedic lamid. Hey, we'll just do a. A, uh, just a few, just a few lines, or maybe even one line. The Tesis Bir Tevis La Say Say. Dr. Rebbe is going to point out in this Pedic, adding additional explanation and meaning to the words La Say Say, which says in the Pasuk Kikore Vilecha Dover Meid Beficho Vilvavcha La Say Say. Because Baruch Hu says this is close. Tevis misses are close, and they're close to you. They're very close to you. In your mouth and in your heart, the Teda adds the word "lasaise," and to bring it into action. And again, this is what the Altarebbe is explaining us: the actions of mitzvahs, and the virtue of action, acts of the action of mitzvahs. Stay uh, again. We'll we'll leave it off over here. We'll stop over here. We'll best should pick up from the second line over here. Gamla <clears throat> Havin. Bez Hashem, the following class, but the al points out that this is the, the, the uh, as we mentioned before, the al will explain, despite the Nefshalikis, again, the godly soul being a part of God prior to its coming down into this very physical world, yet there's a infinitely greater virtue as the Neshama engages in the last seisei in doing mitzvahs, <clears throat> as the al will explain again as we will move on in this uh, very coming class. Have a very good night.